Here's a rundown of the key points from Quiz 4. How not to run an empire? What did the Assyrians do wrong? The Assyrians of the Iron Age created an empire that was based on military oppression and the breaking of local identities in order to remove the threat that's caused by people being proud of where they came from and associating with their heritage and local society and culture. In order to accomplish this, they created standing armies that created a permanent sense of threat and imposition and fear, as well as the casual abuse that always results from standing armies being quartered amongst local populations and they engaged in deliberate acts of brutal aggression up to and including the deporting of local populations, encouraging them to assimilate wherever they've been resituated to, and the planting of strangers in the places where people had used to live. Moreover, the benefits of empire are only felt by the Assyrians, who keep all of the wealth and spoils of their conquest for the elite amongst their own people, causing all of their subjects to be deprived of their own local resources. And even their own armies and commoners were left out of the benefits of empire. As a result, Nobody felt better off being a part of this empire except the Assyrian elite. Everyone else felt only fear and anger and resentment and attacks on their local identity. And this last in particular brings about rebellion throughout the Assyrian empire that grows to the point that the Assyrian empire is pulled down. So their oppressive program and their attacks on local identity is counterproductive. It defeats its own purpose. And their ability to control distant resources, which is the purpose of empire, is sabotaged by hoarding the benefits of empire for themselves. Another element of this is that Mesopotamia in the Iron Age was developing a growing reputation for being a center of learning and scientific exploration in certain areas, in particular engineering, mathematics, and astronomy. But the Assyrians didn't care for learning, and they even assembled one of the greatest libraries in the world not as a place of scholarship or for the purpose of extending human knowledge, but because books are expensive and valuable, and they hoarded all wealth and collected it inside of their palaces to demonstrate their standing above all others, including other Assyrians. This is all in contrast to the Persians, who develop an empire that, bottom line is, makes those who are a part of it feel like they are better off. Why do you think the Persian king released the Judeans and sent them back to Judea? There's a couple of points here. One is that he wanted to demonstrate that the era of Assyrian and Babylonian supremacy was ended. This was a new era and an era that was not about overt oppression. And so this was a great symbolic act to demonstrate the nature of this new empire, the nature of this new ruler, Cyrus the Great. He also had a strategic reason for this. Releasing the Judeans and sending them back home to Judea created a frontier territory on the edge of the Persian Empire full of people that were grateful to Cyrus and this was useful to the Persians because Judea was on the borderlands between the Persian Empire and Egypt, which the Persians hoped to conquer, and which they did in fact do, using Judea as a base under Cyrus's successor, Cambyses. Factors that help make the Persian Empire stable and successful. Possible factors are many, and there are a number of things that you can mention. The Persians lowered the chance of rebellion by ruling with as little oppression as was feasible and tolerating local religion and culture. The Persian king was explicitly not a god, but through ritual, trappings, and seclusion was converted into an abstract symbol that served as a focus of identity for all of the various peoples of the empire. The peoples of the empire had nothing in common except the idea of the great king. Not making the great king a god was also part of a larger process of preventing rebellion by not imposing religion on their subjects. 
The Persians did not keep standing armies, which tend to exploit and oppress local populations and often serve as a justification for going to war. And the Persians, having extended their frontiers to natural geographic barriers, the empire didn't need to have a massive sense of militarization. And so with the lack of standing armies, the empire's subjects enjoyed a sense of peace and protectedness. The system of satrapies was designed to ensure a sense of benevolent and protective rule as much as possible that was situated in each region and culture. And the great king had a system of spies whose role it was to ensure that the satraps were not corrupt or abusive. And finally, the positive encouragement of local economies and vibrant trade within the empire brought about a sense of general prosperity, a higher standard of living, improvements to the birth and death rates, and so people were literally better off as well as more likely to sense that the Persian Empire was not a threat to them, but was in fact something that their local community was better off for being a part of. The people who fought against the Assyrians, the point of this question is that subject peoples from all over the Assyrian Empire rose up against the Assyrians at some point, and toward the end they were collaborating and working together. In particular, the Medes and the Chaldeans were working together to bring down the Assyrians. The Egyptians rose up against them also. The Samaritans are different because the Samaritans are the people that were planted in the lands of the northern tribes of Israel. When the Israelites were deported to Mesopotamia, the Samaritans were the strangers that were planted in these lands. And this is why the Jews that were left behind in Judea, the southern kingdom, hated the Samaritans because they were foreigners and because they had replaced the Israelites who had been forcibly deported because they had been planted there by the Assyrians. And so the Samaritans were universally despised, which is the point of Jesus's parable about the Good Samaritan. You know, all these noble and upright locals walked past this person who was suffering. And the despised foreigner, the Samaritan, was the one who took the time to help this person in need, despite the fact that everyone else hated him. That's the point of the Good Samaritan story, which is often lost today out of the context of what things were like in Iron Age Canaan. And that's the end of the quiz. Email me if you have any questions.